head cases. Check out all our socials and also go to our merch store. We have a lot of cool stuff up there. The links are below. Please check it out and buy something for fuck's sake. We need the money, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on, and I'm so excited about having you here. I would like for you to call out all your socials, call out you know everything and anything about Aranda. If you have anything else outside of that, let us know right away. Sure, absolutely, man. Uh, obviously, at Aranda Music with Instagram. Um, we're on Facebook, just Aranda. I think it's Aranda Band. Um, and then Aranda, Aranda MSC, I believe, on Twitter. Well, X or whatever they call it now. Um, we're not on that very much. Those are the two that we're really on. And then we do have an Aranda MSC TikTok, too, which... Oh, nice. Yeah, which is nice. kind of fun. But we don't post every single day on that like they kind of tell you to. But we post sure. we post frequently. Yeah, I, I started following you guys recently. Realized I didn't realize you were on TikTok at that point, so... Um, yeah. but yeah, I stumbled across it. I'm like, Oh shit, I better, uh, better follow this. Yeah. 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 Well, Trisha from T-Star photography. She's actually the one that got me into you guys back in like okay. 2014, wow. you know? Yeah. 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 So it was like, uh, driving up here when I was, you know, starting to date her, um, you know, she'd send me little songs and stuff for my long ride up here to Janesville. Cause I lived in Illinois and, uh, you know, she turned me on to Satisfied and uh, One More Lie and stuff like that. All the great love songs, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. But they were the acoustic versions, too, at one point. So, yeah, that, you know, you can kind of fall off and say that those are, you know, a little more, uh, you know, heartfelt, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, very yeah. at the time. <laughs> right, right. So, um you know, talk a little bit about the new album. You know, of course, we want to hear what's going on with that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we put out a record at this point last year. We put out the Deluxe, though, in April, which has a bunch of extra songs on it, too. But, um, yeah, we recorded a lot of it uh, during the pandemic and kind of right kind of on the tail end. Of, uh, it, we were in the middle of the pandemic when we started it, um, and then we – um, finished it kind of at the tail end and got to put it out. And it's just, what's cool about the record for us is one, we got to, we did our first feature ever. We've never done a feature on any Aranda record. And we got to uh, do one with our childhood hero, um, Vernon Reed from living color. And which oh was, yeah, which was just, you know, surreal because we just, I, we've listened to all the, at least for me, the first three um, Living Color records are just like, they're amazing. And so, we, oh, for sure. So, man, I mean, we, we uh, were excited that he did that. And we kind of did it. It was kind of cool because we were able to, we shipped because it was during the pandemic, you know, he couldn't come out to do it. So he was in New York and he tracked it, you know, out there. And then we flew it back. We flew it back in to Oklahoma City and got it all kind of. Um, going and it was really fun to do that and then you know a lot of the themes on the record are really I mean they're just they're different for us in the sense that um, there is a little bit more broad I guess overall um, uh, and not that we're not broad sometimes but this record was really diverse and kind of what it was saying and dealt with a lot of things such as you know even a little bit of the social issue stuff plus you know, uh, mental health, uh, all those things. And, um, and it was really, really a great, great record. We, a great record for us to work on because it was really us completely being us and doing the music that we love to do. And so we were just thankful that anybody listened to it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, when I first saw you guys was at a taste of Madison show and, uh, you had um, Daryl from Run DMC come up, 
Yeah, and it's tricky, and I lost my fucking mind when you guys did that. Dude, it, it was fun though. It, actually, yeah, we did. It's tricky and walk this way too. And yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the walk this way, uh, man. Again, that's stuff you're listening to as a small kid. You know what I mean? And it was like, oh, for sure. And to yep. be able to, uh, I remember um, having that little record. Um, as a kid, uh, raising hell from run DMC was the, was the record that both of those songs were on. And man, I mean, here's the thing. He's a legend, you know what I mean? And so just to be able to do, do that. And I remember that taste of Madison really well. So it was fun. Yeah. It was funny because, um, we actually had a chance to take a picture with him. And oh yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah I'll, I'll post it on this as like a, a screenshot, but, um, it is a, fucking coolest picture i think i've taken in a while uh he had the horns up around both of us yeah he just had this grimace on his face and i'm like hell yeah this this guy you know he's a legend you know yeah oh for sure yeah yep. now some of the some of the covers i mean besides the fact that i am i listen to this thing probably once a week your michael jackson montage <laughs> like fucking blows me away, dude. I swear to God, when you did that and you guys were doing those high notes and Gabe was hitting some stuff, I'm like, where the hell, where, where is this voice coming from? You know? Yeah. A lot of the, <laughs> it's funny. I remember when we were, we were kind of messing around with that and doing that. Uh, you know, I mean, also too, it comes from back in the day when, you know, you're cutting your teeth and you're doing all that stuff. You, you're doing cover a lot of covers and you're playing three and four hour gigs at night and doing those things. That's kind of before you really hit the original, like, Hey, people accept us for just playing original music um, era. Yeah, I've been there. And, and yeah. what, you know what I mean? And so it's tough. You're trying to make, you know, a couple hundred bucks to figure out rent and all that good stuff. So the fun thing about it was uh, Michael Jackson was a staple when we were doing that stuff. And man, we'd always have fun with it because it would almost kind of be a, a caricature of Michael Jackson, you know. We'd all, all the little things like the key and you know the do, do, da, 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 do, you know all that stuff, and we were just like, man, let's have fun with this. We did it acoustic at a sound lounge. Yes, uh, exactly. That's the one I'm specifically thinking of. Yep. And and man, uh, it just went over so well. We can't get out of Madison now without playing that. So that's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I can't remember the podcast or the interview name. It's on your website. Uh, play it loud. Play it loud. Yeah. That inter well, that was, good interview. That was a cool interview. And uh, diving into it a little bit, they were talking or you were mentioning Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I, I want to dive into that a little bit because it was such a funny. Uh, I'd listened to it about a week ago and I was laughing my ass off about it because I'm a big Weird Al Yankovic fan. So what made you start that? And what were the songs that actually were, you know, that you and your brother were goofing around with? Man, so I think from a really early age, personally for me, I love to create. But I think with Weird Al Yankovic, I thought it was so cool that he would take other people's songs and make them funny and make people laugh and do all that stuff. And so... The first record I ever owned from Weird Al Yankovic was Dare to be Stupid. And uh, if you remember that record. Um, and uh, it was just, I don't know. I It was like so good, you know. Um, I think they even had like a parody of George of the Jungle on there. And it was like, uh, so, it was kind of a more of a deeper cut. That Oh, the other one was Yoda instead of Lola. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, I met him. I used to love... Um... I Nothing lost on Jeopardy. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, all those, all those things. I just thought he was great. And honestly, for me, um, in my songwriting journey, he was the first guy I was like, "Well, if I'm not coming up with melodies and doing all the things myself, maybe I can just start making, you know, stuff up to other people's songs for a little while and just kind of mess around with the lyrics." So that's kind of the introduction as a nine, ten year old. You know, uh, that you start, you're like, Weird Al can do it. We can do it too. So, you know, you'd watch MTV back in those days and you'd get, you know, songs, just all, all the hair bands were just going crazy at that point. And uh, we would just make so many 
stupid parodies up and just both me and Gabe and just laugh. And we would, we would make a, we would basically take a tape, a cassette tape, and we put toilet paper in there so that we can record over, you know, uh, one of the, one of those things. And so we put it in the tape deck and we put that in there and we would do an album. You know, we probably did three or four albums of these little tapes. I actually still own a couple of them and it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. It's really funny. We had a, there was a song by Emerson Lake and Palmer called touch and go. And we did a song and we did a song, the parody of it called flush and go. And it was about using the bathroom. Oh, God. About using the bathroom. But we, we would, so we didn't really know, we didn't know how to play instruments then. So everything was mouthed, all the instrumentation and all that stuff. And we went into the bathroom and we used sound effects of, you know, when he would go flush and go, you know, then we, Gabe would press the, you know, the toilet and flush it. And then it would be, and then we'd do all the synth sounds and stuff that the Emerson, like, anyway, it was really pretty stupid, but really fun. And, you know, we just we were pretty creative from a young age. You got to do like an Easter egg, like do a Patreon where you put those up there and they pay five bucks a month to hear each individual song throughout. You know what I mean? <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. Dude, I'd pay the I'd pay the five bucks right away. You know? That's <laughs> you fucking know, that's hilarious, actually, man. That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, no, that would be. I, I'm pretty sure your especially your deep fans, they would be all over that shit. Yeah. You know, um, hello, puppy. <laughs> this is Mia. She's my little Chewini. She's amazing. She's she's a tour manager. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she runs things. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely runs things. And definitely. All right, so on, on a, a deeper note with your musical background, I mean, for one, you're amazing. Guitar player to gu- guitar player. I play guitar also. Dude, the stuff you could do. And you're singing on top of that is amazing to me. Like I can play guitar. I can't, I suck at singing. I used to be able to do like heavier stuff, but nah, (laughs) but you have, you and your brother have amazing voices for one. But when you do some like, uh, you know, little drop-ins and stuff like that and compliment your brother as he's singing, it's, it's so soulful. And, uh, you know, I, I would like, like I said, I would like to deep dive into the f- ways that you got your voice to do what they do. And same with your brother, too. I mean, did you have classical training or you just you guys just goofed around enough to where you're like, yeah, this is this is actually really cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, um, we didn't have classical training for sure. We uh, we grew up, you know, my dad and mom just listened to a lot of the greats a lot of the great singers and both of us really, it was crazy because we, we both had the same influences, but we also did have distinct uh, opposite influences. You know, I think my brother was really, you know, taken by a little bit, maybe more of the R and B side of things uh, with, you know, even in rock, like with living color and, you know, Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder and some of those guys, uh, which also influenced me a lot, but I don't know if I'd put them in my top three, which I think my brother would probably put those guys in his top three. I would be more, you know, I loved Zepp with Robert Plant and, uh, I liked some of those guys I could really scream. I'm a big Chris Cornell fan. Um, Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and the, those kind of voices. And so, it was, it's kind of cool because I think my brother and I rubbed off on each other in some ways. So I think even though we have kind of our distinct voices, a lot of people go, you guys sound a lot alike, you know? And I think some of that comes from, well, one being brothers, but two, I think it comes from, we were able to kind of watch each other grow separately and then able to come together and that's when all the harmonies and all those things came in and one of the things that we love to do back in the day and we still do a ton on it yeah we still do a ton um that would be we would sing a lot of unison stuff so when we would sing it would sound more thick because we were both singing the exact same part um and we learned to do that even in the studio to make it just i don't know it would and it would almost just sound like one voice yeah, I was going to say it fills it out differently. And, you know, you're so used to somebody doing like a fifth or like an octave difference or whatever. And 
it's nice to hear something that is parallel. Yeah. And it sounds so much stronger, especially live, man. I mean, I was blown away the first time I saw you guys. You know, I was absolutely blown away. Um, oh, thank you. She, yeah, Trisha actually told, you know, she, she asked me a couple of times throughout some of the uh, music that we listen to. She looks at me and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm mesmerizing right now. I can't headbang or get into it right now. I'm literally like focused so much on what's going on <laughs> that I'm frozen, you know? And uh, you guys did that to me too. You know, I was literally like, it was, there was a lot of soul within your music. I'm going to tell you. Man, thank um, you. I mean, we, yeah. we love, you know, one of the things, I mean, we're pretty emotionally charged in general. Uh, we're pretty passionate, you know, as far as when we, when we're doing music, it's, there is no other gear than 10, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the other thing is too, um, so you have a four piece, but I always, I, I've seen a keyboard player there too. Yeah, we have, I mean, we have a few guys that have just been friends with us really for 10, 15 years that have kind of come in and out and played with us. One of our great friends, his name's Dan Walker, who he actually plays a lot for yeah. Anderson and Nancy Wilson from heart. Yep. Um, He's amazing, but he plays. A, he played at a lot of the Taste of Madisons with us. Uh, as I was well. going to say, yeah, yeah, and he's amazing, and um, he always added something. Um, one of the guys that co-produced the record with us, his name is James Connor, um, which he's also a, basically like family at this point. Uh, he he plays guitar with us now sometimes, and it's really it's cool because we we would always usually not have another guitar player for the most part. We would sometimes if it's a real big show, it's like, Oh, maybe we'll add something or do something like that. But um, he's, he's gone out with us a lot the last year and it's really made a difference just as far as like, you know, when those riffs just come in and they're, they're just crazy, you know, and you're just like, man, this is what it's all about. I love it. And I've watched, a, I mean, a lot of your YouTube stuff and I could see like, you guys do a lot of uh, impromptu stuff too. Like you're almost like uh, how co you know co uh, comedians work the uh, crowd. Yeah, you guys do that also, which is really cool. And uh, <laughs> you know that shows a true musician, though. Like if you could basically play something, you're like, yeah, we don't know this song, but we're gonna get it. Or it's Man, a song somebody called out, and you just start playing it. You know, that's we love cool to shit. entertain. We love to entertain. We've all been always been uh, maybe to our detriment sometimes. People pleasers. We love to we love to ham it up. We want people to leave our show and go, man. Those guys gave us what we wanted. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that's why I like the bands, or we like the bands we like. You know, if it if it's very uh, cookie cutter it falls off eventually like live wise, especially, you know, I don't mind listening to an album or something like that, but there's times where I'm like, all right, I know they're going to play the same way live, but you yeah. guys like you, you have so many variables and audibles, if I can call that. Um, there's been times where I'm like, I know this song live, but he added this riff or he did something here that made it really cool live, you know? And uh, I catch that a lot with, with you, especially. Um, but I don't, I, you amaze me as a guitar player though. Man, I, I appreciate that. I, it's funny. I, I go on YouTube now and I go on <laughs> a lot of these other, uh, just places where you can, there's just so many guitar players now that are really technically just, just unreal. You know, I have some of my, I, I consider them friends now, but uh, there's a guy, his name's Andy Wood, and he plays all over the place. You probably see him all over the internet, and um, he's just amazing. And the, it's funny, the bass player in his band is named Ben Eller, and he has like this YouTube YouTube thing where he's he does a lot of teaching. But man, the thing that's just amazing about that is he's the bass player in that band, and he is like, unreal guitar player like unreal like if he was anywhere else he would be playing if it was anybody but andy he'd be playing 
you know, guitar. And I just, I guess I say all that is just because like, there's so many guys that are so that it's humbling just to be like, man, uh, to be able to even go out and, and share stages with these guys and, and do that stuff. And so with guitar itself, I've always taken it with an approach, you know, it always, for me, at first was, I need to write a song and this is my vehicle to do it. And then I think as I kind of progressed, I was like, man, I loved a lot of the classic guitar players. So you'll probably hear a lot more of that in my style, uh, which is a little bit more to the seventies, eighties kind of stuff. And then, man, you get, you get all those influences in you and then you kind of come out with yourself. It's like a different kind of thing. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty spontaneous and sometimes I'd, I don't even know what I play when I'm on stage. Sometimes it's just because it's like, feels like a language. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm just trying to speak. <laughs> so I'm a big uh, fan of uh, Joe Satriani and Steve Vai. And <sighs> two yeah, of my, so there, two dude, my there, there's, yeah, there's a short on YouTube that uh, Steve Vai was talking to Joe Satriani and some podcast. I think it might've even been Joe's and he goes, uh, so I had this instructor and uh, he gave me homework and it was learn every note on the guitar and what the key is. He only had a week to learn that. <laughs> and he came back a week later because he didn't know what the hell he was doing. First, it was like literally the first day that he was learning with Joe. Yeah. And he came back and he's like, I want you to play a riff in the you know key of B. He's like, I don't even know where the hell a B is. <laughs> right. Oh, it's so fucking funny. And I remember those days when I first started learning and I was like, holy shit, you know, and it was, I didn't have Joe Satriani, but I remember looking at the, the neck of a guitar going, oh, the hell with this, <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. I mean, those guys are, I mean, when you talk about masters of the instrument, you know, it's like, oh yeah. When I first was coming up playing guitar, I had a, uh, a, a tablature book of flying in a blue dream that whole yes theory. and man that's i'll be honest with you i think through some of my formative years i that's all the legato stuff that he was doing i just yeah had to copy all that stuff you know yeah you eat it up yep well, well, no, with the alien was the tab book that i had yeah you know so. that was before i was like man i can play really fast without having to pick fast that was the, right. the biggest thing. I was like, okay, cool. And then, you know, then you start trying to figure out the, all the alternate picking stuff. But Joe Satriani was like, man, really work on your left hand. You know what I mean? And like figure it yeah. out, you know? And, do, you know, and the other thing with your guitar playing, there's uh, a percussive side to it too, I've noticed. Like you, I've watched you on acoustic and you're like aggressive on it sometimes. And, it's it actually sh again shows that soul but you're like your hair swinging around and you're just beating the shit out of that thing and i'm like <laughs> i fucking love it man i you know when when somebody gets into an acoustic like that that's where it's at like you could see that you're literally your heart opening up on that guitar you well know? one thing about acoustic guitar in general uh is you're just you can't hide behind anything with that thing, you know, can't hide, hide behind effects. You can't hide behind anything. It's like, you got to come and you got to, you got to figure it out. You know what I mean? And so the cool thing about an acoustic guitar also too, is it feels like you're almost wrestling with it a lot because strings are a little bit thicker. You know, you're only working with kind of what you have naturally going on. And so, um, so maybe it's more laboring than anything. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like you literally can't hide behind distortion on an acoustic. You yeah. Know? Like you, you can screw to, around a little bit. Before. I've tried to do that before. Yeah. But, yeah. I, well, we were on a, a ship rocked cruise one time and, um, and I had done this a few times before, but I thought I was going to watch an acoustic set by Zach Wild and he sits down with his acoustic guitar and the first thing he does is press that distortion button and just i mean he's just dude he, he all over. yeah yeah he's uh he's one of my top five i would say top it's 10 the, maybe it's the first time i think i've ever seen a guitar player playing acoustic and doing pinch harmonics on the acoustic it was amazing yeah 
like you know you can't see slipknot doing that that'd be kind of weird you know <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. zach wild can uh, do no wrong oh yeah yeah i mean i remember when uh they were doing that guitar center um contest for ozzy's replacement or not ozzy you know the guitar players replacement for ozzy and uh they went to i think it was chicago new york and uh la those guitar centers and they had probably 150 people in there uh-huh. trying out for them and zach won that through that plus pride and glory of course yeah but yeah yeah but yeah <clears throat> he he blows my mind like dude he's he's a beast man yep but um so when you guys come up with your uh say like your next song what's the writing process like is it more where you both collaborate or does the whole band get together or do you just kind of maybe take some notes and then meet later i mean what's what's the actual process man i think it's weird uh sometimes because uh i know i'm writing constantly for not just aranda but just all sorts of different things and my brother he he really is a great writer, but he does it more sparsely. You know what I mean? And so uh, when you go, Hey Gabe, it's time to do an Aranda project. He's then his brain starts going, okay, now I'm, I'm doing this. So a lot of the times uh, he'll come with an idea and um, he'll mouth like even riffs, like, man, I hear it like this. Can you kind of do this or whatever? And I'll be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that feels pretty good when it's kind of reversed and I'm kind of doing it, I like a lot of the time with melodies, I think, and I guess we both do this, but a lot of times with melodies, I try to come up with some of that stuff first so that the guitar doesn't uh, hinder me. Cause you know, you just have your go-to stuff that you love to do. And sometimes I let the melody kind of write itself. And then I start going and, and, and creating the music over that. And then concept, man. I mean, you know, <sighs> It's just kind of, man, how you're feeling, what you're, what you're looking at, you know, if you're find some kind of cool phrase in a book or, you know, um, I've got a couple of new ideas that I've been working with this week and a lot of it, you know, I'm still, I think, uh, not to get too crazy serious, but, you know, I deal with some, you know, some pretty heavy depression sometimes and some, some just, I guess you call mental health issues. I guess we all go through that, but um but music is kind of the therapy as you you know and a lot of people say that but you know i'm like okay i'm gonna i'm how am i feeling today like let me get one phrase in and then that'll be the concept and then the concept kind of turns into the story which turns into the song oh agreeable man that's um so merv from power man 5000 actually talked about that pretty good in depth in one of our podcasts and he talks about uh, if you were to walk and go get ice cream and you wrote a song about what the ice cream tastes like, you sound like a lunatic. Yeah. But he's like, now, if you want to go buy ice cream and you're walking home and your house is on fire and every sense of whether it's mental, physical, you smell something, you taste the ice cream and you write that song because yeah. of the trauma, that's how a good song is actually written or a great song is actually written. And I... I feel like you guys do the same thing. Um, some of the lyrics, man, you like either it's I'm pissed off, you know, like at, at the end of it, re- reading, like, especially satisfied. Like I've been through those relationships yeah. and it's like, oh, God, you know, you're only happy then, you know? Yeah, that's it's funny, too, because as you get older and as you learn, um, I think now it's funny that those kind of songs, especially on that, that record, stop the world were pretty much kind of the one sided man. This person did this to me. This is what happened. And this is, you know, and I think it relates to a lot of people definitely related to me at the time. Um, But now I'm starting to find a little bit more growth and maturity. And I think, you know, overall, even with those situations, sometimes everyone has their, uh, their part to play in the demise or whatever it may be, you know what I mean? And so I've been exploring some of those kind of like 
subject matters, even with some of the new songs that I'm where it's not maybe just one sided, but it's like, hey, I can see it from your side. You know, I still I'm not liking you right now, but I can see why I had a part of this, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Uh, it's an evolution, basically, what, what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, we always grow wiser. Not all of us, of course, but we can evolve and become wiser. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the cool thing about life itself. If you get if you get to wake up in the morning and breathe again and get up and face another day. Yes. The, the ultimate, I think, uh, goal is to grow and to learn and to become a better human being. And if we can do that every day, I mean, obviously the world would be tons better, wouldn't it? Hell yeah. And uh, you know, honestly, that's, that's my, my, uh, my thing every morning is like, you know, I, I got this nice place. I have a decent job. I'm excited about doing things and challenging myself. And, uh, you know, music helps it a hundred percent all the time. Like yep. we could throw out a play. I have you guys on a playlist where if I'm having, having a rough day, I'll play these funnier ones or, you know, do these more uplifting ones or like whatever. And if I'm exhausted, I'll play your more energetic stuff and, yeah, you know, it re-energizes things, you know? And, uh, that's, what's cool. Yeah, about it's, the catalog now, do you know what I mean? Like, now we have enough songs in our catalog to where there are, or, or at least I feel like there's something kind of for everybody. All right. So I have a two, I guess a two question kind of, I don't know, but any, it, what it is is what's your favorite song that you play? It can't be a cover though. It has to be an Aranda original because you know, you, you guys can go very deep if i said something about covers <laughs> so uh right, right. yeah and what's the worst one on top of that what's the one you're like i can't do it anymore man it's funny one of the songs i never get tired of playing is a song off a record that we did called not the same and it's called don't wake me and uh i just uh, the lyrics are pretty deep for me that I, I love the lyrics, but I also love <clears throat> that we started exploring different time signatures and we do part of the verse in seven, eight and um, you know, just stuff like that where you're just like, man, this is really, this is cool. You know what I mean? This is, uh, it was that song and even that album in some ways, musically, again, we talk about growth with, I really thought that we were growing a lot on that record. Just, we were just trying stuff and, and trying to be, you know, every record, or at least I think with the Randa is, is just different. You know, it's like, man, this flavor, if you want stop the world, here's this flavor, you know, if you want not the same, here's this flavor. Um, but yeah. Um, so I would say don't wake me. Uh, and then the wor the one that I don't like the, the most. <laughs> uh, Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot about that, but man, I don't know. Uh, you know, I do love Satisfied. Don't get me wrong. I, I love that song. Like it, it was a moment in my life that, you know, it had to be re expressed. And I, I don't think I've ever been a part of a song where so many people email, come up to our merch booth, come up and talk to us and say, I can relate so much with this song. And so for that, I'm forever grateful for the connection of it. But sometimes we don't play it in the set. And people get so mad at us that we almost like we're, we're doing it again all the time now, but we had a couple shows last year where we didn't do it. And I mean, I'm not kidding. People were seriously really upset. And so um, I had one, one guy, he was like, I'll never pay to see you again. Cause you didn't play. I'm not satisfied. Did you hear me? I'm not satisfied. And I was like, Oh God. <laughs> I was like, man, I'll I'll video you a performance and you can listen to it. <laughs> you know what you, you what you need to do is get like business cards that say got satisfied on them, like the got milk thing. <laughs> right. And yeah. just hand it to the people that are pissed, you know? <laughs> exactly. So I mean, I told Gabe the other day, I go, we'll always figure out a way to put that song in there. And man, here's the thing that I have realized over the years. It's like, man, when we go play live, it's 
it's for the fans. You know what I mean? It is for the fans. I just, uh, I was just a little taken taken by surprise that people would get that upset about it. But I, you know, I can understand being bummed out. I've been to show, I've been to shows by some of my favorite artists where I'm like, dang, they didn't play such and such song. And I'm, man, that sucks. But I still like them. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is between like musicians and like fans that are, maybe they're lovers of music and not a musician. I think there's a difference of, uh, you know, if they don't hear their favorite song as a fan, it's a little more hurtful than if a musician doesn't hear their favorite song. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But I get as, it. As a musician, we still enjoy the entirety. Yeah. You know, and that's any live show I go to. It, that's just how I feel. If I know the music and I've yeah. listened to them for years or even if it's a new band, you know, um, that's exactly how I feel every time I go to go to a show. And that, yeah. And that makes sense, you know. Um, yeah. I'm, and again, we're happy to play it all the time. That was just one that, you know, sometimes I like to take a break from it. <laughs> I don't blame you. You know, like you, you eat saltines for 15 years and then all of a sudden you want a Ritz. Yeah. You know what I mean, like I'm tired of these saltines at this point. Yeah. You know? Well, it's I mean, it's what's great about it is it's it's always ever since it's been out, you know, it's always been you know, around and in our sets and people want to hear it and all that stuff. Um, we're doing this uh, 15th anniversary party in Oklahoma city for the first, our first national release, the one with, you know, still in the dark and um, why you want to bring me down and those songs. And there are so many, so we're going to play the album down in its entirety and we're going to do, it's going to be a big party, big blowout, but we, you know, there are songs on that album that I have not played in, 13, 14 years. So we're going to have to practice a lot. <laughs> oh, that's great. So looking at like, if you type in Aranda songs on Google, why you want to bring me down is all one word. Why is that? Man, honestly, we, uh, we were like, can we do something to kind of bring more attention to it? It was really all it was. It was like, we could, we could space everything out and make it grammatically correct. But uh, it's such an aggressive song, you know, you almost like, want to say it fast too. Why do you want to bring me down? You know, it's like, it's just right there. <laughs> I actually want that as a t-shirt. We need that. We'll probably do some, it's funny for that 15th anniversary thing. We're yeah. looking for ideas for, you know, two or three different like themes from that album to do some t-shirts with. So I'll keep that in mind. And if we do make one, I'll send you one. But nonetheless, you know, I'm going to close out here. I mean, it, it's been a lot of fun, man. I'm, I'm so happy to have you on. Man, thank uh, you so much for having me, really. And yeah, and yeah. Mia, she enjoyed it too. <laughs> I, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> yep. I wish I had my my pup down here. She could have said hi to her. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but nonetheless, close out with the same thing. You know, all your socials, whatever's going on, even the solo projects. If you guys have something that's coming up that you're doing on your own, and you want to promote it, please by all means. Yeah, I mean, we uh, obviously, um, I told you about in, on December 1st, we're doing the big one time only show in OKC at a place called the Tower Theater. And it's basically celebrating the 15 years of our first national release. It's going to be amazing. Tickets are on sale now. Uh, and if you want to come, you know, I know I, f I go and drive to a lot of different shows if it's not in my city. So I'm just throwing it out there if anybody wants to travel and and come be a part of it because it's going to be it's going to be a really special night. Uh, the other thing uh, is my brother and I are in a project called Adam Music Project, which is basically rock music um, about video game characters. And it's oh, my God, that's awesome, dude. It's really, really fun. If if you want to get on Spotify or whatever, uh, Apple Music, wherever you listen to music, do a deep dive because there's probably I can't remember how many songs but we have like a little over 20 songs out right now. Another album is going to come out, I think, in November. And we're literally it's just it's it's fun. It's a, it's kind of exciting because, you know, we have one of the songs is actually making a push at radio right now called The Conqueror. And uh, and it's oh hell no. <laughs> yeah. And so you never know. It could be our next uh touring thing next year um so 
anyway, be looking for, out for Adam Music Project. That's a, a really fun thing for us. Oh, and then the awesome. social media, at Aranda Music on Instagram, at Aranda MSC on TikTok, and then Facebook, we're on there as Aranda, Aranda Band, I think. So, hell yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. Perfect, man. Let's <laughs> go.